Mr Taylor, the guest as always here in the studio on a Wednesday. We've already gone through his selections, which are also available on the website. Time now to look at Hugh's eye catches. And we've got a big long list, as you mentioned off the top of the show, Hugh, plenty of them from Wolverhampton on Saturday. You've been trawling through the <laughs> cards and amazing that you've come up with so many from there. Yeah, it might be quantity over quality this week. There's a few that are slightly tenuous ones, perhaps one or two that I think are worth, worth keeping note of, though. Well, let's start with Aldermore, who is trained by Stuart Williams and uh, lined up at Wolverhampton uh, recently. Just given a little bit too much to do maybe on this occasion. Is that the assessment well, came sixth? Possibly, but there's two or three. That I've, I've, I've taken the view that uh, the, the course at Wolverhampton lately has been riding very fast. Um, and it's been difficult to come from a long way behind on, as a result on a lot of occasions, but it's also been difficult to come wide. I tend to think that when it's riding fast, um, the inside is more favourable and when it's riding slow it tends to be more I think you want to be a bit wider. You can see he's in a position where he probably can't win the race from, from where he is turning for home and Aldermore he's on the extreme left of your screen now and he makes steady late headway but never looks like getting there and I think he probably wasn't ideally positioned didn't really get the run of the race but did just enough to suggest that he's, he's in form. He won two outings ago then didn't back that up next time um, but he's well handicapped on some of his old form. He's only just started running on polytrack. He's done most of his racing on turf. But at the moment, I'm just slightly upgrading. While the track is riding so fast, I'm slightly upgrading horses that have run wide. Right. And there's two or three of those in the eye catchers this week. So, so he's one of them. OK, and the next one also at Wolverhampton, a horse called uh, Francis Albert. This one was in action in the six furlong handicap as well on Saturday. Uh, finished seventh. Um, was not beaten particularly far, only three and a quarter lengths. Is it a similar story with this one? Yes, it is. Again, um, stepped up to six furlongs from five. Um, and it's partly on the basis of this race. Partly he'd also been a bit better in his position at Catrick on his previous start, where he'd reared at the start. But uh, you see his force very, very wide, having travelled quite well on the home turn. And I think, especially in, a race where, in, in races where they perhaps haven't gone a mad gallop, I think it's difficult to overcome that because you are giving away so much ground. And I think the fact that he, he kept on and went past one or two horses who were perhaps just on the inside of him in, in the straight suggests that he's in quite good form. His stamina might just have been stretched by six furlongs as well. Um, but um, yeah, I think he, he's, he's now got two below par figures in his name. He's finished what, seventh or eighth his last two starts. Um, he might just be a bit overpriced next time as a result because he, he ran as if he's still in good enough form there. OK, so that's Francis Albert, one to watch out for for Michael Mourinho. The next one to look at comes from the William Jarvis yard, a horse called Beluska, a winner last time out. Seems to be unexposed on the polytrack as well here. Yeah, and this is another. Uh, this is perhaps a more extreme example of going all the way around the outside. And he represents a stable that's back in really good form now, um, William Jarvis. And he really does go right round the houses. And I thought this was quite a good effort to win. He'd been possibly a bit better than the result in his previous start at Chepstow because he was on the wrong part of the track that day. And you see his force very wide. And he's got plenty to do here. And you wouldn't really say um, that he's, he's, he's going to get up and win. And he takes a little while to knuckle down, possibly still a, a bit green. But once he does, once he gets in the clear, he finishes really well. Um, and I thought this was a good effort and probably he needs marking up more than the bare margin of victory, which wasn't very large. In the end, he is well on top in the final 20 yards, but it's only there that he's got there, if that makes sense. And he's only gone up three pounds as a result. So um, he might be one who can, who can go in. I see he's got an entry. I think he's got an entry on turf next week. So whether he back that up on turf, I don't know, but certainly on polytrack. I think he can win again. Interested in him next time. Okay, so that's the two-year-old for William Jarvis Berluska. The next one um, was a horse called Lithograph, first time out, so also at Wolverhampton. Um, finished ninth on this occasion, was beaten 13 lengths, lining up for Mahmoud al Zarudi, really well-bred colt, as you'd expect, a filly, sorry, from uh, much of their stable, from the family of Starcraft, actually an Aussie bred, isn't it? Um, but to finish ninth on this occasion and presumably you think she's going to come on a lot for this experience well yeah she's she travels really strongly and that's encouraging um whether whether she's got a future with the godolphin or not i don't know well, i have no idea if she's entered in the in the horse in training cells or not but she's she's lobbing along really nicely here but some way off the pace and she's behind one that's not really going anywhere and her jockey kind of sits still um, to be fair there's probably not an obvious out for him but he's still sitting quietly there and meanwhile the race is developing um, 
up front and he's already now the race is out of reach and she doesn't really pick up in great style but then it's her first run and she might have just needed it for fitness there might be a bit of greenness there she gets another horse comes across her she's eventually beaten quite a long way but she traveled well enough to suggest she might be just the type to leave that a long way behind next time with that under under her belt Okay, and we've got another newcomer to look at. This one trained by Hugh Morrison. I remember seeing this at Windsor on Monday. Was in action in the maiden. First time out. It was being pretty highly tighted beforehand as having worked well on the gallops in Lambourne. Finished fifth, eight lengths behind the subsequent winner, Money Never Sleeps. And again, looked like progress would be on the cards, I guess. Yeah, and he, he I like the way he travelled up. Um, he's going strongly. He's under, still under restraint here at halfway. Um... And then, as you often get the case with a two-year-old first time out, not quite sure what to do off the bridle. And his rider is very, very sensitive to this. And he's not given anything like a hard time. Um, I thought all in all he travelled the way he went through the race. I'll be surprised. He might not be better than the winner, but I'll be surprised if he doesn't turn out better than all the others. Um, and he's, he doesn't get the clearest passage in the closing stages. Runs on really nicely on the hands and heels ride. He's also, also caught my eyes by Exceeding Excel, who's got a very good record on Polytrack, so they have that option with him as well to, to, to give him a spin on, on Polytrack as well. So he's a horse who sooner or later I think will be winning races and, and um, will leave that a, a fair bit behind, yeah. I would imagine. And he looked well in the paddock beforehand and the team obviously think a bit of him, so flexible flyer, one for your notebooks. The next one to look at then is a horse called African Broadway, who um, was in action at Chepstow last time out. We've got a rare jumper thrown yeah. into the mix here. <laughs> um, this is just an novice hurdle. Um, looks to be a pretty nice prospect. Yeah, it, it was a, a decent jumps card at Chepstow on Saturday, and having had a look through it, I, I thought this was the, the performance that stood out. I know we had cue card um, in the novice chase against some of the good novice chases, but I thought this was a really good performance for a horse who... He won a race in the fog at, at Big Odds at Newbury last year, where we didn't really see much of the race. Um, but it's clear that wasn't a fluke. Um, he travelled nicely through the race. I like the fact that he was he was sent into the lead some way out. He's, he's clearly a, a reasonably straightforward ride, I would suggest. Um, and he comes clear without really being put in, under any sort of pressure. And the time was certainly good in, in comparison to the second division that was run over the same distance. Uh, the second division, they did start more slowly, but uh, the time was still better. And he's eased down. He, he bunny hopped the last, but apart from that, he jumped very well. And I think they've probably got a very nice horse on. And I think he's a horse we're going to see here a lot more of, providing everything stays sound with him uh, for the rest of the year. I was really impressed by that. He mm. was he was the one horse that I saw Chepstow on Saturday. Who I thought he's he's one I'd want to keep on side. Because he maybe shocked the team, didn't he? When he won his bumper, he was fifty mm. to one on his yeah. last start last year. Mm. But obviously, he's he's progressed and gone on. And, and as you say, he's definitely one to earmark. So David Pipe's yeah. African Broadway one mm. for the jumps ranks going forward. And back onto the poly track at Wolverhampton then on the Saturday. And the next one to take a look at is a horse called Good Authority, who finished second on this occasion. Um, stepping back up to the seven furlong trips here, having run over six furlongs beforehand, is well bred. A half brother to Dandy Man, no less. And, and seems to have improved for the switch to Karen George here. Yeah, this is now two good runs that he's turned in in a row. And he let the eventual winner, Ducal, get first run on him. Um, and again, this is probably a theme of some, some of the um, selections, but he's, he's come from quite a long way back. And the winner had been fairly progressive in, in previous runs, and he gets four or five length starts. Uh, Ducal does on, on, on Good Authority and I really like the way Good Authority finished from a long way back and the other thing to like is as far as I can tell the handicap has just left these horses alone in terms of ratings which is understandable because they were they were the first three were rated fairly closely together and they've pulled clear of some probably quite moderate horses but um, I'll be very surprised if, if Good Authority can't win the handicap off his current mark of, of 70 he's, he's now run two good races one over six one over seven and he was charging out with the finish there. Yep, good authority then. Another one to note down. The next is a two-year-old again, first time out on this occasion on Saturday at Wolverhampton. A horse called Decision by One, trained by Tom Dascom. Uh, finished fifth on this occasion, is also well related, a half to the, to the fairly useful Taurus twins. Had the widest draw on this occasion and uh, again, similar situation, presumably you think did better than than he could have done on debut and can go on and do even better. 
Yeah, it was tough because he was drawn, I think, from that stall 13, which is a very difficult draw, and particularly first time out on a turning track, that doesn't make life any easier, and he gets a bit behind, again, the, the theme of so many of the, this week's eye catchers. Um, and there's, I'm sure there was an element of greenness again in, in the fact that he's, he takes a while to come to terms with it. But if you watch the last two furlongs, he really starts to get the idea and he weaves his way through. I think he eventually finishes fifth um, and he goes past three or four horses in the final furlong. And I don't think it's necessarily um, a suggestion that he wants further more of the fact that circumstances conspired against him. He was drawn wide. He was... He, he, he was green, he was on a turning track and on a track that's probably favouring speed when when they don't go too fast at the moment. So all in all, I thought that was very encouraging. He's sprint bred, so I would imagine they'd probably keep him six furlongs next time and he looks like the type who might win a maiden next time. OK, so that's Tom Dascom decision by one. The last one to look at, and this is a head-on view we're going to get, of Lock and Tanks, who was second at Wolverhampton um, also on Saturday. Now, this horse is trained by Michael Appleby just seems to have such a consistent record but doesn't get his head in front very often yeah, would that be a worry putting that, him as it is as a fair comment that because his, his win to run record isn't that impressive but I, I couldn't see that he did much wrong here to be honest other than that he was in the wrong position um, he the, the winner blue moon is in a similar position to him actually turning for home but possibly gets a slightly clearer run down the outside switches wide and locker tanks doesn't he, he he finds himself a couple of lengths behind Blue Moon and he has to thread his way through. But I did like the way he pa went past horses and he went between two horses um, in a fairly narrow gap here, which I thought was quite good, and went past them. And his jockey also dropped his whip, <laughs> um, which is a fairly topical thing. And whether that made the difference, I, I, I couldn't say, but it was a very narrow margin at the line. His jockey didn't have a whip in the final 50 yards or so. And you'll see from the head on here, um, he's only got a narrow gap there, but he does go through it um, and uh, his jockey drops it. There he goes. Yeah. And um, so he doesn't have a whip in the final 100 yards or so. And he's only just beaten. And although he's he's got a moderate win-run record, Still I think he's been running reasonably faith, well yeah. lately. I think, I think he's... Um, I thought he shaped well there, put it that way. OK, so Lock and Tank's the final one of those eye-catchers. Plenty, just from what you've said mm -hmm. about them, the ones that have stood out from the explanations you've given for me would be a horse like Flexible Fly, maybe Belusca. Are there any in particular that you that you think are the ones to rely on in that I think list? I think they're the two from the all-weather, Belusca and Flexible Fly. Lock and Tank's, I should add, I think, I think he runs at Haydock on Friday and not so sure about going back on turf, but I think he's got a lower mark. Um, African Broadway as well, I was very impressed with at Chepstow over Hurdles, so... I don't know what his programme will be now. He'll probably be running under a penalty at a short price somewhere, so I, I doubt I'll be backing him next time. But um, he's he's an interesting early season hurdler for sure. Great. Well, plenty for your notebooks there from Hugh's Eye Catchers. As you know, we've got two meetings here on At The Races this afternoon. Lingfield here on Home Soil. Punchers Town will dominate on the Irish front. They host a seven-race jumps card, so I'm very pleased to head straight over there now and get an update from Gary O'Brien, who's on course for us.